I would like to introduce you in this wonderful world of multicultural management. And perhaps it's important, first of all, to understand what is culture. Culture has many layers. It's like an onion. On the outside, we find the expressions, the products of culture. Things like the architecture we build, the food we eat, the language we speak, and the way we behave. But be careful, because these outside expressions can have different interpretations. People might buy sushis and hamburgers for different reasons. So we go to the second layer of the onion called culture. And that is the layer of norms and values. Norms are shared orientations of, we de of what we define as what we should do and values of what we like to do. When something works, like breathing, the value of oxygen has become a norm through breathing, it slips out of consciousness and becomes a basic assumption. In other words, basic assumptions are values that have become norms. We try to structure basic assumptions in three main areas. The way we relate with human beings, we call them human relationships and we distinguish five aspects, time and nature, which adds up to this so-called seven-dimensional model. Let me give you an overview of the seven dimensions. On the one hand, we have universalism versus particularism. Some characteristics, a universalistic culture tends to go for rules and don't like exceptions that much. They have standards and love to standardize things in very universal rules. On the other hand, we have particularistic cultures who say, hey, yes, I know there is a rule, but I like the exceptional case. So let's go around the rule. Those cultures are characterized by more flexibility. A second dimension of culture, still in the human relationships, is our relationship with the group, individualism versus collectivism or communitarianism. In individualistic cultures, we rather go for autonomy and creativity, while in communitarian cultures, it's all about consensus and uh, taking care of the group uh, and, and team spirit. A third dimension is how we express emotions. Are we rather neutral or affective? Neutral cultures inhibit their emotions, don't show them, while affective cultures do. A fourth dimension is called specific versus diffuse. It's perhaps a more difficult one. In a specific culture, people tend to relate to each other around very specific objectives. It's very clear why you're married, tax deduction. A diffuse culture, much more difficult to access, but once you're in, you have a relationship where you share everything. The marriage is about love. A fifth dimension is what gives people status. On the one hand, we have achievement-oriented cultures. Everything is done and based on what you do, your performance. On the other hand, we have ascribed cultures where status comes from who you are. What is your background, your family, are you male or female, young or old? Or fi finally, an example is where you studied rather than what you studied. The last two dimensions relate with time and nature. Time has a variety of aspects, short-term versus long-term cultures. Are you rather past, present or future oriented? And finally, how do we organize time? Sequentially, step by step, or in parallel, we call the last one synchronic cultures. Finally, we have this wonderful dimension of how we relate to nature. Do you like to control nature? We call that internally controlled cultures. Or is nature controlling you? Externally controlled cultures. A final world. We have a model of culture, seven dimensions, but it's all quite kind of linear. Are you this or are you that? When cultures come together, we need to reconcile the differences. It needs another way of thinking about this. And that's where dilemma comes in. The word dilemma comes from the Greek two propositions. We have, in order to deal effectively with dilemmas, to crack the line into a dual axis. And when we have a dual axis, we can say, how can one side help you with the other? How can teams consist of creative individuals? How can the exception prove the rule? We have many of those examples, but the essence of the success of multicultural management is how you connect the two.